to hear. I want you to think about that. The Bible said this, uh, verse uh, 1 and chapter 21. The Bible said, The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, when King Zedekiah sent unto Pashur, the son of Melchiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, saying, Inquire, I pray, of the Lord for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all of his wonderful works. Now notice, amen, the attitude of Zedekiah. Notice what he said to Jeremiah. He said, inquire, I pray, of the Lord for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. Listen to this attitude. He said, if so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all of his wonderful works that he may go up from us. And then said, then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall you say to Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back weapons of war against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans which besiege you without the walls. I will assemble them into the midst of this city. I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and fury and in great wrath. I will smite the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah. Listen to this. This is the king now. He said, I will deliver Zedekiah, the king of Judah and his servants and the people that are left in this city from the pestilence and from the sword from the famine in the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into the hand of their enemies and into those that smite them with the edge of the sword. And he shall not spare them, neither have pity or have mercy. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. That's all that we'll read tonight. And amen. I want to look at this tonight when God tells you what you don't want to hear. Amen. When God tells you how that you don't what you don't want to hear. And how, have you ever prayed for something and been very diligent in prayer? Really seeking God. I'm not talking about, amen, the vain repetition of just of your bedtime prayer. I'm talking about being sincere and compassionate and down on your knees and praying. And really, really what you're praying, you already know what you want God to do for you. Amen. You already know what the answer is. And you're just asking God to make it happen. Amen. You're asking God to, amen, to, to do, uh, brother, what you want God to do. And really, we, when we pray, the Bible said uh, that we ought to pray like this. Uh, Father, not my will, uh, but thy will be done. Uh, amen. I'm a, I believe her tonight if we'll start praying, uh, amen, that God's will would be done. Uh, brothers and sisters, in our life uh, and that we can live a whole lot better life. Uh, and now here the man of God, Jeremiah, uh, was called in summons uh, by the king Zedekiah. Uh, and you see, at that particular time in Israel, uh, the Bible said over the Israelites, uh, reign Zedekiah, uh, amen, and over the tribe of Judah, uh, the Bible said they reigned, amen, Pashur. Uh, and there was two kings over the people of God. And the Bible said that Jeremiah had a message. And the message was this. Amen. There's a line in the thicket. Brother, there is a day of gloom. Brother, that's a coming. And the Bible said that they didn't want to hear that. And oh, I find out it's just like that now. Amen. Everybody, even the church, they want you to tell them brother, what they want to hear. Amen. Well, the the attitude of most folk. A preacher tell me that I'm going to heaven. A preacher tell me that I'm saved. I tell 
protein. Amen. They put him down in the manure. And the Bible said they kept him down in there for days. Why? Because he had an answer. Amen. That God said there was trouble coming. Church, you better hear me tonight. We're in the last days. No doubt we are. Amen. If we're not in the last days. Brother, as I said before. Amen. I have bread to see you come. Amen. The days of sorrow. The days. Amen. I thought about what the Bible said. In the book of Genesis. He said that my spirit. I will not always strive with man. It seemed like God is leaving people alone. I see there's an can Amen. A bit interesting and going to the house of God anymore. And as matters of fact, the church itself, a brother, there's a decline. Amen. Oh, what's going on? Amen. The Bible said that old king had put the man of God in the prison. Well, the Bible said, here come Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. He began to draw closer. The enemy began to draw closer. A brother to the children of Israel. I saw King Zedekiah, a brother of the children of the king of the Israelites. The Bible said that he got a little worried. Amen. They didn't like the prophet. A brother, when he was telling them everything that was wrong. But when the enemy started crowding in, the Bible said that they called Zedekiah. Amen. Jeremiah. Do you know where they got him at? The Bible said they had to take a bunch of rags and tie them together. Amen. And let them down into the pit and to pull the prophet of God out. Oh, tonight. Amen. We're in a day where people, the Bible said that he to himself teachers, having itching ears, and deceiving a brother and being deceived. Oh, it's a scary day. The Bible said it's a perilous time. That means it's a dangerous time. So they got Jeremiah. And now Jeremiah had just been preaching to the people at the day of gloom was a coming. And then the day of destruction was a coming. But now listen to the attitude of Zedekiah. He said, Go pray for us. Amen. That you may tell us of the wondrous works of God. Amen. He's beginning to eat a little humble pie. And you let me tell you tonight of them that reject God, of them that think they don't need God. There's a day that's a coming. Amen. They're going to cry out. The Bible said, because they often been reproved. Amen. God called them and called them. Amen. Day in and day out. He said, I'll stretch my hand out. I do a disobedient and a can't see a people. He said that they would not. Don't let this rebellion get in your church. Don't let this stubbornness, amen, get in you. The Bible said, I've grown out of God, and God will grow out of you. Oh, we ain't got time to play games. And we ain't got time, amen, to fool around. And while the Bible said the day of the Lord is at hand, and the night is far gone, and the, crib, the Bible said and that they called Jeremiah out. They said, Jeremiah, tell us what the Lord says. And tell us, amen, what we need to do. I saw Jeremiah pray. Oh, this king just had great expectations. Amen, that Jeremiah would come back and give them some good news. Oh, but the Bible said to be not deceived. And God is not mold. And whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. you're going to reap. And you can't have God and have the world too. And you can't have the blessing of the Lord. Amen. And the blessing of this world. And they just don't go together. But I heard Jesus say, and no man can serve two masters. And you'll love the one and hate the other. And which one do you love tonight? And do you love Jesus? Are you living for him? Are you walking this good highway of are you doing what God has said to do? I saw Jeremiah, the man of God. He went to God in prayer. And God spoke to him. And he said, let me tell you what's getting ready to happen. Oh, God. It's going to be a day that the children are going to fall in the street. And man, the Bible said that the birds of the air is going to devour them. Oh, <laughs> 
something good oh tonight amen let me say friend I don't expect brother Jason have to come in here and tickle your ears when they sin everywhere amen there's lust everywhere there's hell being raised everywhere and you and I brother we've got to get a hold of God and stay a hold of God and hate the works of the flesh and hate the spots in their charity and live this life Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord tonight. Some of you ain't said nothing since you've been here. Say it louder. Praise, praise the Lord. I didn't hurt you, did it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, this king was sitting on his, amen, in his pomp and his royal array. And the old prophet, I wonder if they even cleaned the poop off of him. Amen. The stench off of him. Because just a few hours ago, they put him in jail. Amen. Put him down in the mire because they didn't want to hear what the man of God said. But now when the enemy comes, here they are now. They love Jeremiah. Amen. Now they want to hear what he had to say. So they got him out. Amen. The Bible said that Jeremiah looked him right in the eyes. He said, Zedekiah, you're going to be taken. Your children's going to be taken. The king of Judah and his children, they're going to be taken away. I can imagine their hearts. I just begin to melt. And then over here, you've got all of these prophets. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know what they did? If you read on in the book of Jeremiah, they followed Jeremiah's prophecy. And they said, Jeremiah's wrong. Amen. They ain't no Nebuchadnezzar going to come and take us. Oh, you're going to always have them loose living preachers. And you're going to always, I don't know. Amen. I'm not a toot my own horn. So you sat under the gospel here at any accounts of prayer. You've heard the truth of God's word. I said that you down through the years. If you ever quit this church and you go to another one, you're going to understand and know, brother, how when you've got a little half-wit preacher up here, amen, that's just stepping around the tulips, amen, afraid to hurt somebody's feelings. Brother, you know the truth. And the Bible said the truth. Tonight I need to hurry and quit. But I feel the God of heaven in my soul tonight. God wants me to Bless tell you. Hey man, that he loves you. But sometimes, hey man, he'll tell you what you don't want to hear. I remember. Hey man, I hate digging this up, but I had to. I feel like the Lord wants me to tell it. Hey man, when I the church that I used to pastor that I got voted out of. When we uh, had no idea that I was going to get voted out, had no idea, amen, that they was going to get rid of me. There was way more of us than there was them, but none of our names was on none of our names was on the membership. Uh, so I was young, a young, just a young preacher. I remember the the the, uh, the vote was on a Wednesday. It was on a Wednesday. I went into church. Amen. That week prior to that meeting on Wednesday when they was going to have the pastor election. And I took all and I walked around. And I anointed every pew in the church. And I anointed the back Sunday school rooms. And then I went down in the basement and I was anointing that. Amen. I was anointing that. I got to feeling God. I did. I was all by myself. I got to feeling God. And I laid down. I went the Bible with me. Amen. I was walking around. I knew that God. Amen. Wasn't going to move me out of there. We just had built that church. Things like that just don't happen. Amen. I knew God wasn't going to cause us, Brother Randall. Amen. To leave. We just got in that church. I bet I marched around that church. Went down in that basement. Got down on my face and laid down on the ground. Opened up my Bible. Amen. I'll never forget as long as I live. I never told my Time. But when I opened up my Bible, up the scripture came open. I don't know where it was at. I can't remember what book and chapter. But the Bible came open, and here's what my eyes read. Behold, I move thee this day. I am moving thee this day. I shut my Bible, and I said, no, God. I remember like it was yesterday. No, God. No. You told me something that I didn't want to 
here. Oh, God, you've got to learn to trust in him. Amen. You've got to learn to believe in him. When God don't do what you want him to do. Amen. When God don't answer your prayer. Hey, he ain't a puppet on a string. He ain't a God. Amen. I brother, this one down. I look down at you saying, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Amen. He ain't like that. It takes prayer. It takes move of the spirit in your life. I to get a hold of God. I'm just about done. Amen. So when I, I shut my Bible up, I went home. Amen. All night long. Behold, I'm moving. Behold, I'm moving. Have you ever prayed and God told you something that you didn't want to hear? That job that you thought you couldn't live without? Amen. That man that you was dating? Amen. That girl that you was dating? And you thought you couldn't live without him? But God said, no! No! Oh, church, you've got to hear me tonight. God knows more about your welfare than you do. He's looking more out for you than what you think. Amen. You've got to trust in the Lord. For I heard the writer in Proverbs say, Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. His ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Amen. Let me make a long story short. Amen. If God had to move me, we wouldn't have been here in Antioch. If God had to move me, we wouldn't have no camp meeting. If God had to move me, we wouldn't have had a Christian school. And God knows what he's doing. And God knows what he's doing in your life. I preach to you tonight about two kings. Amen. That had the prophet come before him. And brother God, I didn't tell them what they wanted to hear. And God may be telling you tonight, you may want to cut your people and to do this right now. And God, I need you to move. I need you to move. I need you to do it now, but God ain't doing it. Amen. Let me tell you, if you're his child tonight, and he ain't doing it, there's a reason that he ain't doing it right now in your life. Now, the big question is, can you praise him? Can you bless his name? Because he's not doing what you think you know you need. He's your father, isn't he? His sister right here, her husband. Some of y'all probably don't remember her. Her husband. Her husband's the one that got shot. Amen. And Grundy. I believe that's right in his sister. In McCann County, he came with the King Mountain Brothers to give his testimony two or three times. How in the world could that have been God's will? But you see, God's got ways of moving things around. God's got ways of putting things and taking things away. You see, God can open doors and God can shut doors. Sometimes we lose jobs and we thank God's forsaken us. And then a door comes open to a new job. Sometimes, amen, our family gets in a mess and we thank God they're going under this town. And then, brother, the sun starts shining again. And we didn't realize that God is working it out for our good. God, you love the Lord. Come here, you love the Lord. Don't you raise your hand and be a hypocrite. You love the Lord. You're keeping his commandments, ain't you? You're walking in this highway of holiness. If you love the Lord, I'm going to tell you something tonight. God's working things out for your good. He may have told you no in this. He may have told you you can't have this. He may have told you no, you can't go that way. Oh, but God's working things out for the good of them that love him. God, according to his purpose, come on, sir. Hallelujah. Preach in the heart tonight what the Lord's giving me this morning while I was praying. Sometimes we pray all day long. Have you ever prayed and asked God something and known the whole time that you're wasting your breath of praying because you done knew really what God wanted? When I was a young Christian, I used to love music. I loved all kinds of music. My flesh still likes music. I like it, Sister Vicky, when you got that. Back there in the escape room. I'm a music man. Can't play nothing. Can't, <laughs> barely can whistle, but I like music. And I got saved, me and Christy, we like to, amen, we like to dance. And 
We like to do that when we're young Christians. I didn't have no preacher preaching over me, Brother Randall. And that's why, that's even more the reason why I know that if you ain't got a man of God in the pulpit, you can go to church and still get out here and live like chaos and loose, loose on the handle. Amen. That's why we got to have a man of God leading the flock of God. I can remember praying. I remember asking God, and the Lord telling me the whole time is wrong. And I remember asking God, is it all right for me to do this? Lord, I can do this. You see, you'll justify yourself. You'll justify yourself. You'll justify yourself. Amen. But the whole time God knew, and the whole time I knew, God was telling me exactly what I didn't want to hear. Jason, you can't have that. You can't, you can't have that. It's got work, it's got sin in it. It's got sin in it. You've got to lay it down. You've got to lay it down. Now, I believe God spoke to some folks in here tonight. I believe there's some things in here you need to lay down, and then there's some things. This is the victory flag. Amen. I got another one here I've been using. Some of you need to wave the surrender flag. And say, okay, God, whatever you have, whatever you have, whatever you have, amen. You surrender to God, you'll win. It's the only battle I know you can surrender and win. You surrender to God, you'll win tonight. There's just some things you need to pray about tonight. All the same. Go ahead, Sister Sarah. 